So what other autoimmune diseases do you think could be assisted by this? Well, um, we, we, we do a lot of MS. Um, that's probably our, our number one indication. We just finished a clinical trial, prospective clinical trial. We submit it for publication. It should be, it should be coming out in the next month or so. Um, and, and, and statistically significantly, the, the, these patients improved dramatically. And as far as side effect profiles, it was highly minimal. I mean, you feel few headaches and few, few flu-like symptoms, things like that. And how but many it, people? This was with 20 people. And one of the one of the individuals actually is, is clinically is perfect, and all of his lesions went away. And and we only did one treatment with these. Typically with MS, it's more refractory than rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis usually after one treatment, people get a ton of benefit. With MS, they usually see after two or three treatments that they they really they see the most benefit. And we only did one treatment in this in this trial. But one one gentleman had three lesions in his brain. All three lesions completely disappeared. So. Um, MS is a big thing. Rheumatoid arthritis is a, bi is a big thing. And I tell you, there's stories in the, not stories, but, re you know, people talking about with their responses, and it's pretty incredible. There's one lady that um, her husband is a, phys a Ph.D. physicist. He carried on working just so she could afford, just so she could have insurance to afford the medications, which were around 100 grand a year for her to get treated for rheumatoid arthritis. And she came down about, it'll be, th it's, a little over three years ago, November, and she hasn't been on any medication since. She actually started walking around the mall when she was in Panama, and then when she got home, she's completely, you know, pain-free, and she's been pain-free for three years, and her husband finally retired because he didn't care about, you know, having the insurance to pay for these very expensive drugs that she was taking. So MS, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, um, we don't we don't have a lupus protocol. There's a, there's a, a group in China that's that's published six really good papers on lupus. It's very very effective in in their trials. We haven't done it yet. Um, and and then autism, it, you know, it's it's not considered an autoimmune disease, but um, we we have a trial. We just completed our autism trial with 33 uh, 33 uh, enrollees. Uh, with very good results, uh, many many of those kids became non autistic after treatment. So um, that's confusing to me because you're talking about people that are young, right? right? So why why would it have such a benef benefit for them? Well, um, I wrote an article in 2007 about why these cells should be good for autism, and and and, and basically. It um, it's and it's the most downloaded article this journal's ever had. I and mean, something like seventy five thousand people have downloaded a scientific journal article, which really doesn't happen very often. Um, but kids, people with autism have inflammatory things going on in their body. A lot of times in the gut, um, there are in the in the in the at the end of the small intestine, there are these inflammatory nodules that look a lot like Crohn's disease, and they secrete these this inflammation that then goes to the brain, inflames the white matter of the brain, the white matter of the brain swells, decreases the blood flow to the brain, all that's inter, you know, intertwined. And then just a few years ago, there was a study that came out, and this is what, this is what allowed us to go forward with our clinical trial. Um, they found that there are these two inflammatory molecules that are MDC and TARC, and they perfectly correlate with the severity of symptoms of autism. And so we measured not only those two, but another 30-some biomarkers. We measured, we did quantitative EEGs. We did uh, a lot of standardized scoring, store, a scoring with uh, a neurologist that, that read them, you know, be, before treatment, during treatment, after treatment. Uh, so I, I believe a lot of the problems with autism have stem from the inflammatory uh, status, and these cells are definitely anti-inflammatory. Yeah, they've had some benefit uh, with re changing the diet and changing the gut biome of mm -hmm. kids with autism, and they've made some benefits for that, and which they th they believe is also connected to inflammation. Yeah, absolutely. If your if your immune system's freaking out every time you eat a piece of bread, uh, and that and that immune system's throwing out molecules that are swelling your brain and inflaming your brain, then it makes complete sense. And yeah, you know, the, uh, I think in general the the the, the People with autism that do the best are the ones that get that addressed before they come down. Um, you know, there's some other doctors that do functional medicine. They look at their diet. They look at see if they have any heavy metals and that sort of thing. And the ones that just are slam dunk, do the best, have been cleaned up before they come down. <laughs>